A church led by male elders, one of whom is clearly understood to be gifted to be lead elder, who are ordained by the Holy Spirit, recognized and confirmed through apostolic ministry. These men are to be helped in fulfilling their callings through ongoing fellowship with translocal ministries. With regards to elders, you, uh, you would tend to emphasize the importance of plurality, that, that there should be more than one elder. How important do you think that is? Well, elders in the New Testament always referred to in plural, mm -hmm. and uh, it would seem that there would always be a team of elders, a group of elders, and uh, that, that's a context where, yeah, the word shepherd, the word uh, bishop or overseer, and uh, the word elder, they're used interchangeably of the same people, and uh, yeah, they tend to be a group, always in plural. I think that that's important. Again, um, the Old Testament had the priest, and uh, the priest in the Old Testament was something of a mediator. Now, we know now we, our one high priest, the Lord Jesus, is our only mediator, and now we're all priests to God. The Reformation rediscovered the priesthood of all believers. Uh, the danger is sometimes when uh, Protestant churches carry over almost a kind of priestly concept of their pastor. He's the holy man. In the, in the, in the pre-Reformation day, a priest was the holy man. He didn't marry. He's kind of set apart. Uh, he's special. And uh, now the Reformation said, no, no, that's not true. Uh, we're all priests to God. And yeah, we need pastors. The danger is when the pastor still has that kind of, well, he's the holy man concept and he, he prays and uh, he knows God. He knows the Bible. Uh, and yet you would argue for the importance of a lead elder within that context. How do you argue for that particularly and do you see it as a biblical thing? I think it's very hard to demonstrate biblically in as much as you won't find uh, lead elder as uh, a phrase in the Bible. But I think that it's almost impossible to see a team operating without a team leader or a captain, if you like. Mm. And I would say that the, the scripture plainly talks about leaders and leadership, but it's impossible to function without someone who carries responsibility. Now, that doesn't mean that the leader dominates or he's the only one who gets revelation. Uh, he can be very much uh, within a team of elders, uh, the one who gives the lead, yes, but when other gifts, like maybe prophetic gift in the eldership team or an evangelistic gift in the eldership team or an administrative gift, in the eldership team, there'll be seasons and moments when a person's gift takes him into the lead in the meeting, in the move, in the eldership together, because, well, he's, when he speaks on that subject, we all listen. I mean, he's so gifted on it. And that may be true of a, a teacher who has got a very uh, theological ability to say, actually, brothers, this is what the scripture says. We need to unravel that. And certainly I've seen in the various teams I've been in, and certainly the eldership team, uh, locally, we've different times drawn on different gifts and when the elders are functioning, when we're covering a certain subject, this guy's authority comes through because of his sphere of gifting. Nevertheless, having said all that, it's the team leader, if you like, who facilitates his coming through and giving weight to what he says. It's not he's having a shout, now he's having a shout. It is that the team leader say, hey, now come on, let's hear from him because he's the guy we respect on this subject. So it's not a one-man band. It's very much the opposite of that. But to function properly, it needs uh, someone who takes the lead. And indeed, it may be in eldership meetings that that guy is not the most gifted guy at leading a meeting. Uh, I was never very good at handling agendas, making sure we got through them. In fact, it's helpful for me to have somebody else who can put an agenda together, make sure we're working the time through, are we getting through this thing? Uh, so leadership doesn't mean I have to do it, I do it all, not at all. But there's a kind of respect, well, this guy, he just leads us forward. Mm. I guess you can see it as much in the Old Testament as anywhere in terms of God raising up individuals and people rallying to that individual and God mm -hmm. taking hold of a Gideon or a David or a mm. Moses and, and his grace on them and people mm. rising to that and mm. finding that there's a compulsion. I want to follow this guy. Mm. I think it's good to notice in that, that David um, had, you know, David's raised up, mm. but in his team, if you want to call it that, 
He got some pretty fearsome people. Yeah. They weren't all just, you know, yeah. pushover. Yeah. These are frightening guys who are very skilled, got their own stories to mm -hmm. tell.